I'm sitting here with uh, Leif Edmondson at the Future Center of the New Club of Paris in Liechtenstein. And I just want to talk with him a little bit about uh, his history, his path into the field of knowledge management and intellectual capital. Hello, Leif. Hello. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, your history. Like, when did you move to <coughs> the field of knowledge management or intellectual capital? What were your first steps, your first points? One of the, the very first steps was when I was working in a company and we wanted to borrow money. And uh, then we went to the bank and then presented the case of a growing uh, company. And uh, the bank asked the question about what kind of collaterals do you have mm -hmm. for lending money to you? And as we were in the knowledge business, as we were a consulting operation, as a service company, we didn't have traditional assets on the balance sheet. So they turned us down. And then uh, we went uh, back to our office and, and uh, a few days later we called them and said that um, we have um, forgot to tell you that we have another balance sheet mm -hmm. in the foundation with some real estate in it. And that, oh, then it's a totally different business. <laughs> so we got the loan <laughs> based on that. And then out of that came the question, what is most important, dead assets or living assets? Mm -hmm. And you can easily relate that to credit analysis of banks. And this was the, the, the birth, giving birth to intellectual capital reporting at that company? Uh, you could say so, yes. yes. That was the starting of the learning journey for me and my colleagues and, and many more people. And, and later on we were working for one of the clients where they were working with, um, uh, as a kind of, a, the, at that time it was the largest travel agency in Sweden. And we were looking into what were their assets or um, big uh, areas of uh, future. And then uh, it became evident that it was not in the balance sheet, mm -hmm. it was not in the staff, but it was in the customer base, mm -hmm. in what is now called the, the relational capital, yeah. because they had thousands or tens of thousands of customers in that database. And they just kind of are quiet, go quiet. It's lucky that us young boys are still going. We need the next generation. I know, we better get them. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Simon is here. <laughs> so let's talk so a little bit about um, the Future we, Center thing. Yes, um, so the Future Center emerged at the same time, uh, uh, more or less, as the um, Scandi Navigator, because uh, you need two dimensions uh, in the, the um, knowledge navigation. One is position, and for that you need the IC measurement, uh, and mm -hmm. then you also need the direction, and for that you need the future center as a tool, actually. In, otherwise, you are just going to extend the present. Yeah. So, uh, Scandia Future Center became a, a tool in the same way as the IC measurement. And we launched the uh, future center in 1996, mm -hmm. uh, the very first one, on the 17th of uh, May. Mm -hmm which is a very special date. And, and then uh, we um, uh, can today see that there are many more cousins uh, of that. Of that. Uh, yeah, both in Europe as well as in Asia. How did it uh, come from the, the original Future Center in Scandia to the Open Future Project of the EU? I, th I think the, the, um, there is the same kind of search that you have to develop a process to move from the present into the future and then back to the present. And uh, what most of the um, learnings that we were going through at that time could be phrased uh, in terms of uh, the founder visa, that we are living in an era of institutional failure. Mm -hmm. So th as a big financial uh, service company, we were suffering from that, uh, as well as universities are today, and the uh, car industry is doing, uh, suffering from uh, today as well. So therefore you need to develop the process of moving into the future and that's also why the Scandi Navigator has innovation and renewal mm -hmm. as the, the bottom line.
And do you think these two tools, like uh, intellectual capital reporting and future center, um, are already the uh, the end of the travel, or do we need further tools? We need much more further tools. I think the most interesting tools down the road seems to be social media, and uh, that's why uh, this kind of flip uh, as a technology <laughs> is. We are recording. <laughs> so. Um, so that's why this kind of tool is, is very important, to realize that we are moving out of the tool of the traditional um, Gesellschaft or corporation mm -hmm. or the firm. Mm -hmm. The theory of the firm is an Ita Italian approach, mm -hmm. which is about uh, 600 years old, called firmamente, si. uh, where you lock it up. No. Uh, and uh, the modern enterprise of, of tomorrow is going to be uh, networked. And, and we see that with Google today, we see that with Facebook, and Facebook is already uh, the fourth largest nation in the world. So it's the emerging pattern is that we are moving from corporations to communities. Yeah. And that has a tremendous implication for employment as well as unemployment. Because it might be that the, that the the right status of tomorrow is unemployment. But then you have the political challenge to take care and, and use the, the social funding for unemployment of today, mm -hmm. which might be actually detrimental to the return on social investment. So you mean we can use tools uh, like intellectual capital reporting also to to measure where we are on a global level and then use uh, tools like a global future center to to get a global direction and use social media to to bring out that message and a very intriguing question because we, we can see that um, today with the research of uh, carolyn lim in taiwan as well as Pirjo stall in finland uh, we can start to measure ic of nations so the the um, poland has published on the new club of paris um, the report of IC of Poland, which is a very interesting reading. It was launched in, in July last year, in, in 2009. And um, then the, the Future Center is a tool to uh, increase the awareness of weak signals for acting now. Mm -hmm. And that means that it's a kind of, of uh, observatory. Um, but navigation is based on three things position and direction and in between is speed mm -hmm. and speed is organizational capital so how do you organize for increasing the speed how do you develop an accelerator for the value creation of knowledge is five years at university plus another four years for a phd the right speed for for uh, coming up with a phd degree of knowledge nine years of investment when that knowledge might be obsolete already at, at the moment of the graduation. Right. So you think having future centers on, on more future centers on national and urban level is, is the right way to direct? It's one of the ways. It's one of the ways. So you, you have to learn to prototype. Yeah. And that is the message of Leonardo da Vinci as well rapid prototyping and early prototyping. Good. Good final message. Thank you very much. Thank you.